Hello students, welcome to the class of digital communication. In the previous lecture, we studied sampling theorem. We studied the sampling process, reconstruction process, and then uh, we also uh, understood the effect of aliasing. So for uh, doing sampling, for creating sampling, what we do is we uh, multiply the original signal or the continuous time signal with the impulse signal. Uh, shifted train of impulses, we multiply those shifted train of impulses with the original message signal and then we get the sampled signal. Okay, and in the process of reconstruction, what we do is the sampled signal is passed through a low pass filter and also passed through a gainer, gain uh, or a gain block. So the gain block has a gain of the equal to the sampling period or you can say TS and then it is pass through the full signal is passed through a low pass filter to remove all the higher frequency component and you get back the original signal. This process is also called reconstruction process is called interpolation. So uh, we will be uh, we will be doing the interpol uh, we will be doing the reconstruction filter. We have already done it but yes we will be doing the reconstruction filter uh, reconstruction process in this uh, in this numericals, in, in some of these numericals, we will understand what is the effect of aliasing, how it is visible in the questions, we will see it. What happens in aliasing is that the higher frequency component of the signal, they appear as lower frequency. All of these we will see over here. Let me re reiterate the sampling theorem, which says that uh, the sampling should be done as the, twice the maximum frequency component of the signal. So if your signal is having several frequency components, you will choose the maximum frequency out of that, double it, and then that is your sampling frequency or the Nyquist sampling rate. Okay, and the Nyquist interval is one by uh, the frequency because time period and frequency are inversely related. So let us go on to these questions. These are very standard questions. You can get it in your exams. And I've also added some rectangular, triangular, and sin pulses so that uh, you can get a, uh, get the idea of how to uh, use the sampling theorem when you are given these pulses. These are very important. So please go through the video till the end. So this is our first question. Find the Nyquist rate and Nyquist interval for the signal xt is equals to 1 by 2 pi cos 4000 pi t into cos 1000 pi t. So let us see. I'll just do it once again. So this one was my question xt is equal to one by two pi cos what was it cos four thousand pi t into cos one thousand pi t cos four thousand pi t into cos one thousand pi t so see, here you don't have uh, the signals, uh, the frequency that's 4000 pi and 1000 because these two are multiplied together. You have to first convert it into added terms and then it can happen. Uh, then you can get the actual frequency. So this is the major important thing that you need to do in this question. So from your high schools, you know about this formula 2 cos A into cos B. That is equal to what? Cos A plus B plus cos A minus p right so this is the high school formula that you need to use here so that these are converted into uh, sum terms instead of the product terms so here you have an extra two so what we are going to do is two by four pi that means you are multiplying and dividing by two in the numerator and the denominator then you have this four thousand pi t into cos one thousand pi t Finally, now you can use this 2 cos A into cos B. So that will be written as 1 by 4 pi. And then you will write it as cos 4000 plus 1000. That will give you 5000 pi t. And this one will be written as cos 3000 pi t. Great. Now let's, what, what, what's the next thing that we need to do? We need to find out the frequency. So omega over here for this one. For this one, we have omega 1 is equal to 5000 pi. So 5000 pi and then our frequency will be how much? 2500 hertz. Similarly, for this one, you have omega 2 is equal to 3000 pi. 
you have this one as 3000 pi. So the frequency will be 1500 hertz. How I'm writing this? Omega is equals to 2 pi f. So f will be equals to omega by 2 pi. So everyone, omega 1 and omega 2 have divided by 2 pi. Now, which one is greater? This is 2500 hertz. So the maximum frequency component present in the signal is 2500 hertz. Therefore, the sampling frequency is going to be double of this one. That is 2 times of FM. That will be 5000 hertz. So 5000 hertz is your sampling frequency. Five thousand hertz. Now, what is the sampling rate? Uh, sampling uh, interval. Sampling interval is Ts. That will be one by Fs. That will be how much? One by five thousand. Now, one by five thousand. You can easily convert it. That is one by five into one by thousand. That will be zero point two. Zero point two into ten to the power minus three seconds. You can write it zero point two milliseconds. So from here, you understood that. If the question is given in this format, like in the product terms, you cannot directly take 4000 pi and 1000 pi as your frequency because they are in the product terms. You have to convert it into the sum terms and then you will be able to find out the frequency. And after that, it's just uh, you just need to use the sampling theorem, which says that the sampling frequency is the double of the maximum frequency component. Let's move on to the next question. The signal xt is equals to cos. 10 cos 10 pi t is sampled at a rate of 8 samples per second. So 8 samples per second is your sampling frequency. This is your original signal, which is 10 cos 10 pi t. Plot the amplitude spectra for ohm less than, omega less than 30 pi. You can, in continuous time, we call it ohm. So uh, that is the, basically the frequency is less than equal to 30 pi. Can the original signal be recovered from its samples? Explain. So we need to first find out the sampling frequency. And then we will see that whether this 8, kilo, uh, eight hertz is correct or it is uh, greater than the sampling frequency or lesser than the sampling frequency. So let our signal is xt is equal to cos. Let us clear this one. So the signal is xt is equal to 10 cos 10 pi t. The signal is xt is equals to 10 cos 10 pi t. Finally, uh, find, and now we are going to see what is the omega for this one. This is 10 pi. So what will be the frequency? Again, just dividing it by 2 pi, you will get 5. Right, 5 hertz. Okay, uh, 10 cos 10 pi t. This is, I think there is some, give me a second, just give me a second. Let me just see the question once again. This, okay, fine. It is a 10, the 5 hertz. So your, this is the frequency component there is only one frequency component and that is 5 hertz now if you see that the sampling frequency is going to be 10 hertz and what is the sampling frequency the nyquist free sampling frequency this is your nyquist sampling frequency or you can say the nyquist rate and what is your sampling frequency given in the question let us see that it's written over here 8 samples per second that is 8 hertz so the sampling is done the sampling frequency is 8 hertz Sampling frequency is 8 hertz and the Nyquist sampling frequency is 10 hertz. So the sampling frequency is, sampling frequency is lesser than the Nyquist rate or the Nyquist sampling frequency. So there will be aliasing. The effect of aliasing will be there and you will not be able to recover the signal from its samples. But let us find out the spectra of the signal. Now see, spectra means, what is the meaning of spectra? Spectra means the spectrum, spectrum of the signal, spectrum of the signal. That means you have to show the signal in the frequency domain. Fine. So the on the x-axis, 
spectrum of the signal that means that on the x axis you are going to have the frequency and on the y axis you are going to have the magnitude of the signal okay so the magnitude of the frequ uh, frequency components of the signal so this can be written as omega itself so this will be your uh, frequency axis and this is the magnitude axis that is the amplitude spectra of the signal fine now let us see what was my signal my signal was xt is equals to xt is equals to how much let us see 10 cos 10 pi t okay so the signal over given over here is 10 cos 10 pi t now we need to convert this signal in the frequency domain so you need to perform the fourier transform for this signal so fourier transform of xt we can write it as x of j omega or ohm in the continuous time domain. We write it in this manner. Okay. So this is 10 cos 10 pi t. So for cos, what is the Fourier transform for cos? Cos. You should remember this. The Fourier transform for this one is pi delta ohm plus ohm naught plus delta ohm minus ohm naught. This is the Fourier transform for the cos signal. Fine. Now here you have this Fourier transform you have to do for this one. For 10 cos 10 pi t. So just write it in the same manner. 10 cos 10 pi t. Okay. So the 10 pi will be coming outside. Because this one over here is the amplitude. You nothing. You don't have to do anything with this one. Delta ohm. What is your ohm naught over here? That is 10 pi. So delta ohm plus 10 pi. And delta ohm minus 10 pi. Ohm minus 10 pi. This is for the original signal. Now when you are sampling it. After sampling it. So you are sampling it at what rate? Let us see. The sampling rate was how much for us? Hmm. The sampling rate was 8 hertz, right? The actual sampling rate, Nyquist sampling rate should be 10. But we are sampling it at 8 hertz, right? So we will be using this to produce the sampled signal. So the sampled signal, let us write it at as Let us write it at x s j ohm. This is the uh, Fourier transform of the sample signal. Fine. So you had this 10 pi delta ohm plus 10 pi. Fine. Minus. What you need to do is n ohm s plus delta ohm plus 10 pi here it will be a minus okay fine ohm minus 10 pi minus n ohm s now, what is this ohm is? This is your sampling frequency. So, sampling frequency was 8 hertz. If you write it in uh, omega term, so this, if you write it as omega s, what will it become? If you write it as omega s, omega is equals to 2 pi f. 2 pi f is, so this is going to become 16 pi. Now, so the finally, the sampled signal spectra will be this much. The expression for the sampled signal spectrum will be xsj ohm is equals to 10 pi delta ohm plus 10 pi minus 16 pi n plus delta ohm minus 10 pi minus 16 pi n. Now here the value of n will go on from positive infinity to minus infinity. Fine. So you already know about this when we are doing the sampling. 
So you can take the value of n from positive infinity to negative infinity. Taking, or you can write over here also. Here also you can write at this point a summation n equals to minus infinity to infinity. Fine. Now we will be taking few values of n because here in the question you see it is given that you have to plot the spectrum for less than equal to 30 pi only. Right. For less than equal to 30 pi only. We have already answered this question. Can the original signal be recovered from its samples? It cannot be recovered because the sampling rate is lesser than the Nyquist rate. Now, this one we have to plot the amplitude spectra. So, so see, if you are plotting the amplitude spectra at this point of time, at this point of time, the amplitude spectra will be this man. You will be having, this is your x of j ohm. And this will be your ohm axis, that is a frequency axis. So you'll be having, there will be two components at positive 10 pi and negative minus 10 pi. Minus 10 pi and at 10 pi. Fine. This was for x of j ohm. Now, when you are doing the sampled signal spectra, that time what was going to happen? Let us see. Let us keep this one, this part over here. First, let us write down the values. Okay. So, if I take n equals to 0 for the first case, then I will get the signals at, if you put it, it will get it at 10 pi and minus 10 pi. Right. Putting 0 at this place and this place, you get it. Now, if you put n is equals to 1, then what will you get? 10 minus 16 is minus 6 pi. And in this one, minus 10 pi minus 16 pi, that is minus 26 pi. If you put n is equals to minus 1, what will you get? In the first one, 10 pi plus 16 pi, that will give you 26 pi and minus 10 pi plus, plus 26, uh, sorry, minus 10 pi minus uh, plus 16. So that will give you 6 pi. Got it? Now, if you put n is equals to 2, how much will that be? 10 pi minus 32 pi. So it will be 10 pi minus 32 pi. What will that be? Minus 32 plus 10. That is minus 22. And in this side, uh, in that, uh, this portion, what you will be getting is minus 10 pi minus 22 pi. Uh, 32 pi. That will be minus 42 pi. So you don't need to take this one. Okay, we let us do for minus 2 also. I don't think greater than minus 2 will have to go. Okay, let us see. So the first one was 10 pi minus uh, 10 plus 10 pi plus 32. That will give you plus 42 pi. And if you subtract this part, minus 10 pi plus 32, that will give you 22 pi. If you take n equals to 3, let's check. Let's check 10 minus 48. That will be minus 38. So it won't be there. So why it won't be there? Because see, here we have been told only till 30 pi. So that will give you 48 minus 10 will give you 38. So that is not required. Even this one is not required. And this one is not required. Mod is, it is given that mod of ohm is less than equal to 30 pi. See, it is given mod of ohm is less than equal to 30 pi. That means in between minus 30 pi, you have to plot in between minus 30 pi to 30 pi. So what are the other values we are getting? 6, 26, 22, right? So we are getting the values at 6, 26 and 22. So this will be your spectra at 6, at minus 6, then 26. So those points you have to plot, right? And the signal, This is these are the aliased value of the signal. Got it? Minus 6 pi, 6 pi. Then there was a value at 10 pi, right? There was a value at 10 pi. This is 10 pi. Then you will also be having a value at 
minus 10 pi. Then there will be a value at 22. You can draw it in a proper manner. Minus 22, 26 and minus 26 pi. So all these are pi values. Minus 22 pi, minus 26 pi. These way you will be having the values. Right? Okay. Now let's uh, what uh, uh, now let's go on to the next question. So you had to draw the amplitude spectra of the signal, which you have done it. Fine. So okay. Now let's move on to the next one. For the signal x t is equal to two plus ten cos hundred pi t for t equals to zero point zero one two five. Draw the spectrum of the sample signal and write the expression for the sample signal and the reconstructed signal after passing it through the reconstruction filter. So a lot to do in this question. You have the signal that is x t is equals to 2 plus 10 cos 100 pi t. The sampling interval is given t equals to 0 0.0125. First, let us find out the sampling frequency and the spectrum of the sampled signal. Okay. So, x t is equals to 2 plus 10 cos 100 pi t. So, 2 is a DC component. It is not having any frequency. Right. Okay. Let us first write the... Okay. In the previous question, we wrote this part of it. Okay. I will just write the final excess j ohm and then we will move. Because we drew the sampled part, but we did not... Uh, we drew the spectrum, but we have not written the here. We have I'll be writing it the x s j ohm. This is the expression for the sampled signal. How do we write it? We already wrote half of it 1 by t n is equals to minus infinity to infinity, right? 10 pi delta ohm plus 10 pi minus n ohm s minus n ohm s plus delta ohm minus 10 pi minus n ohm s. For the this particular question, our t was how much was our T? 8 hertz. You were sampling it at 8 hertz, right? 8 hertz. Sampling frequency was 8 hertz. Hmm? So 1 by 1. This is F. So you have to write 1 by T. That is T 1 by F. So 8 will come up. 8, this 10 pi you move outside, so it becomes 80 pi. N is equals to minus infinity to infinity. Delta ohm plus 10 pi minus, we have already seen this ohm s was 16, right? It was 16 something, 16 pi n, right? So this will be 16 pi n plus delta ohm minus 10 pi minus 16 pi n. And we have already drawn the Amplitude spectra for this signal. Fine. Now let's move on to the next question. Okay. Let's take the black pen and get started. The question is x t is equals to what t equals to. Let us copy this part. Okay. So, first of all, let us see that this part is the DC part. Here you have a frequency that omega is 100 pi. Okay. So, your frequency is how much? Again, you will do the same thing, 50 hertz. And what is the uh, sampling interval in the question given? The sampling interval in the question is given as Ts is equals to 0 0.0125. So, you are sampling it at the uh, sampling interval of this one. So, what is Fs? Fs is 1 by Ts. So take out the sampling frequency from here. 0 0.0125. Huh? 
how much will this be Eighty, right? Twenty five is eight, so eighty hertz. So you have the maximum frequency component in the signal is so FM. Maximum frequency component in the signal is fifty hertz, and you are sampling it at eighty hertz. You are sampling it at your sampling rate. So I cannot write here FS sampling. rate given in the question sampling rate is 80 hertz 80 hertz and what should be the nyquist sampling rate the nyquist sampling rate should be 100 hertz two times of fm so again you have the nyquist sampling rate is more than this sampling rate so this you cannot recover the signal from its samples fine now let us see what again what is the question write the draw the spectrum of the sample signal and write the expression for the sample signal and the reconstructed signal after it is passed through the reconstruction filter so almost like the previous one you got the signal now now let us write uh, the first we will take this 2 plus 10 cos 100 pi t So C X T is equals to two plus ten cos hundred pi t. Do the Fourier transform of this. This is two means two into one. You know that the Fourier transform of one is two pi delta o. So it is two into two pi delta o. And this one we already discussed right now. Ten pi delta. Hmm. What is it? Delta O plus hundred pi plus delta O minus hundred pi. This should be the spectrum of the message signal before sampling. After you are going to sample it first, let me write it in a proper manner. Okay, so this one just it will become four. I will not write this one once again. So let us write the sample signal. spectra of the sample signal x s j o so it should be 1 by t we did it right now n is equals to minus infinity to infinity and inside this you will be putting the whole part of this with minus n o m s so what will be the what will uh, what is the o m s over here we are sampling it at 0.0125 that was your sampling interval right so what is your sampling frequency that you got 80 hertz right you got the sampling uh, sampling see over here yes you got the sampling frequency as 80 hertz that sampling rate is your sampling frequency which you are using but the nyquist sampling rate should be 100 fine no problem now let's go ahead and do this uh, what you are going to write it So this one is how much four pi delta o plus ten pi. How much will this be now? Delta o plus hundred pi minus n o s plus delta o minus hundred pi. Minus n o m s. Fine. So when you are going to uh, get this o m s is how much? F s was eight eighty. Let us see this f s once more. F s for our case was eighty. So it will become. Omega 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 will become how much? One sixty pi. One sixty pi. So the signal that we are going to have is the spectra. The question was only the spectra, right? Find the spectrum of the sample signal. Fine. So from here you will get the spectrum of the sampled 
सिग्नल ओके लेट अस राइट इट एक्स एस जे ओम विल बी दिस पोर्शन लेट अस राइट इट फोर पाई डेल्टा ओम प्लस आई एम नॉट राइटिंग दैट वन बाय टी एंड एन इज इक्वल्स टू माइनस इनफिनिटी ओवर हियर वी विल जस्ट टेक द वैल्यूज एंड राइट ओम प्लस हंड्रेड पाई माइनस वन सिक्सटी पाई वन सिक्सटी पाई एन फाइन वन सिक्सटी प्लस डेल्टा ओम माइनस हंड्रेड पाई माइनस वन सिक्सटी पाई एन Now again, when you take the values of n equals to zero, that time you will get the signal at hundred pi and minus hundred pi. If you take the value of n equals to one, you will get the signal at what points? Hundred and minus one sixty. That is how much is that? Minus one sixty plus hundred. That will be minus sixty pi. And Minus hundred minus one sixty. That will be minus two sixty pi. So these will be your values. So this is the way you take it out. N is equals to minus one if you do it. Then you will be getting two sixty pi and sixty pi. So let us see. This is your spectra. More than this, we won't be doing till n is equals to one and minus one only because. Okay, now you are passing it through a reconstruction filter. So your reconstruction filter, the reconstruction filter is the low pass filter. Okay. Now your low pass filter is actually having, uh, the signal should be, how much should be should it be? That is equal to your sampling frequency. That is how much is your sampling frequency? The sampling frequency over here is eighty hertz. so it will pass only this 60 pi and minus 60 pi it is going to pass only these two just see over here the this is your sampling frequency so the reconstruction filter will have the cut off frequency as 160 pi in terms of ohms and in terms of this one it will be uh, 80 hertz 80 hertz will be your uh, reconstruction filter will is going to have this uh, this frequency so 80 pi 80 pi right 80 pi this will be the cut off frequency of the reconstruction filter so only minus 60 pi and 60 pi is going to transmit getting it okay now let's move to how to write the is there any any part left in the question write the expression for the sample signal and the reconstructed signal after passing it through the reconstruction filter so this is the spectra of the sent signal if you want to write the sample signal in the time domain in that case what you need to do is the signal was xt is equal to 2 plus 10 cos 100 pi t 2 plus 10 cos 100 pi t okay so x of nt how you write this you just substitute at the place of small t you will substitute nt so you will get 10 cos 100 pi in and what is your capital capital t is 0.0125 0.0125 from here you will get 2 plus 10 cos 100 pi n uh into 125 by 10000 right how much will this be 20 n 25 5 and 4 So two plus ten cos five pi n by four. Pi by four is five pi n by four. You can convert it into this. Right. So this one will be your x n t or the sampled signal in the time domain. 
So in the previous question, we only did the sample signal in the frequency domain, but in this question, we have done the sample signal in the time domain also. I hope you have understood it, sample signal in time domain. time domain this is the representation so let us once again go through this question so first we had the signal the original signal was uh, uh, 2 plus cos 2 plus 10 cos 100 pi t 2 part is the dc part and so that is uh, just 2 into 1 you can just <coughs> excuse me convert it into frequency domain it will become 2 pi delta down and the other part is 10 cos 100 pi t so we did the Fourier transform and then we wrote the amplitude spectra of the, we drew the amplitude spectra of the signal. <coughs> okay. Now let's move on to the last question. Determine the Nyquist rate and interval for this this one. Sync 200 pi t plus 3 sync square 120 pi t. <coughs> okay, let's clear on this one. Let's write this part over here. So one is sink and the other one is sink square. Fine. So here you need to understand two very important things. That is your rectangular pulse and the triangular pulse. What I'll do is I'll first draw the uh, both in the time domain and the uh, both in the time domain and in the frequency domain, the, both the signals. That is your rect function and the triangular function. Okay, so let us just go through it very carefully. It is a very, very important question. So that's why I have chosen a question where you have both. So this is sink square. Let us let me write it. Okay, so your question is xt is equals to sink. 200 pi t plus 3 sin square 120 pi t. Fine. If you see the sin function, not the sin square, you are seeing the sin function, that time it is in this manner. Fine. The sin function and the rectangular function are Fourier transform pairs. Fine. The sink function and the rectangular functions, they are the Fourier transform pair. So, we will draw it in both the, the duality, the duality property of Fourier transform. You know that. So, we will do it in both the sides and see how it is related. So this one is your time domain. The left side one is your time domain and the right side one is the frequency domain. Okay, so here we am writing it home. home. Now here, give me a second. Let us draw this one in a straight. Okay, so this is, now you can see it very carefully now. Okay, I'll draw it here. So just ignore this portion. Now you can see over here, this is your sync function in time domain. If you do the Fourier transform, you will get the rectangular function. 
This is the rectangular function in time domain. If you do the Fourier transform, you will get the sink function. So here it is your, this is xt. This is xt, this is t. This is ohm. This is a magnitude of ohm. That is x, or you can write, directly write x of j ohm over here. We are not differentiating as magnitude and phase. So x of j ohm right now here. And this one is your ohm. Again, this one is your t. And this one is your x of t. This one is x of t. Now at this, this is, you have to understand what is the width. The width is tau and the magnitude over here is 1. So when this, the width over here is tau, then over here, the zero, the zero crossing points, <clears throat> the zero crossing points are 2 pi by tau minus 2 pi by tau, right? 2 pi by tau minus 2 pi by tau. Getting it? Now, in how we write it, how we write this function, that is your, uh, this sink function, we write it as, I'm writing it in the down. We will write as tau sink ohm tau by 2. Fine. If you will write this in the time domain, what you are going to do? Here you wrote tau sing ohm tau by 2. At this point, what should I write? This is in the time domain. So tau sing ohm will remove tau t by 2, right? And here the same thing is going to happen, minus tau by 2 to tau by 2. This is your rect function. Okay. Now see this question. The first one, sink 200 pi t. So sink, it is not sink squared. So it is sink, that means if you take the Fourier transform of this, the first one is sink 200 pi t. So this is this function, but it is in the time domain. So we should consider this part, this one, it is in the time domain. So this part, the argument part is 200 pi t. So 200 pi t can, is comparable to what? 200 pi t is comparable to this one, tau t by 2, fine tau t by 2. So what is the tau over here? So what you get as tau by 2 Okay, so your tau by 2 is how much? Two hundred pi. Hmm? Tau by 2 is two hundred pi. So, what is your frequency? The frequency will be how much? 100. The frequency for this one is going to be 100 hertz. We can write it F1 over here. Got it? Let us just do it once again. So we, what we did is we just compared this sink 200 pi t. First sink is for this one, this type of uh, the rectangular pulse. Sink square is for the triangular one. So this tau t by 2, you are comparing it with 200 pi t. So 200 pi t, if you compare it, then it is tau by 2 is 200 pi. That means tau by 2, that means what? 
here, over here, when you are seeing the rectangular pulse, the width of this was tau by 2 to minus tau by 2. So this one is your frequency over here, omega. Right. So omega is how much? 200 pi. So omega is 200 pi. So the frequency is 100 hertz. Now if I go to the other one, that is sinc square. Right. The sinc square is your triangular function. Sinc square 120 pi t. So let us do that one also. Sinc square is the Fourier transform of the triangular pulse. So if I draw the triangular pulse over here. Now this is going to have again the zero crossing points are minus tau by 2 and tau by 2 and this value is 1. In the time domain we are seeing this one. X of t. This is t. If we see it in the frequency domain, in the frequency domain, this is going to be the sinc square. In the sinc square, you don't get anything in below the y-axis. It is in this manner, right? So ignore the drawing for now. This is sinc square. So how we write it is x of j ohm. This is a frequency domain. So this is tau by 2. The amplitude is tau by 2. Sinc square ohm t by 4. If you put this sin square in the time domain, fine. If you put the sin square in the time domain, this right now the sin square was in the frequency domain. If you put the sin square in the time domain, then in the frequency domain, you will get the triangular function or the triangular pulse. If you put this one over here, what you are going to get is this point is your x of t right now. So this is tau by 2 sin square t tau by 4. So instead of omega, you had this omega or ohm, you have this t. And the same thing is following. Here the zero crossing points are 4, right, 4 pi by tau. And this is minus 4 pi by tau. The same thing follows. That one was 2 pi by tau. Here it is 4 pi. Just These are few things we are getting after doing the Fourier transform. I am just writing the results over here. Because our main uh, aim over here is to understand how to get the sampling frequency in these kind of signals. So 4 pi by tau. This one will be minus 4 pi by tau. Okay. So here it is. Now the next question for you was what? Sin square 120 pi t. Right. Sin square 120 pi t. <clears throat> so, 120 pi t is comparable to what? t tau by 4, the argument which is inside this one, right? So, t tau by 4. Got it? It is t tau by 4. So t tau by 4. So that tau by 4 is how much? Tau by 4 is 120 pi. If you convert it into the frequency domain, then the frequency of this has to be the triangular pulse. And that triangular pulse is having tau by 2. The width has to be tau by 2 and minus tau by 2. Correct. So here where you have got tau by 4, so take out tau by 2. How much will that be? 65. Right. So your frequency is how much? 65. Okay. Tau by 4 is uh, 120 pi. Uh, if you do it tau by 2, it will become 240 pi. Sorry. So this has to be. 240 pi. So your frequency over here will become, this is your omega, right? So your frequency will become how much? 120 hertz. This is the second frequency. The first frequency was how much? From that sync one, how much was the frequency? I hope I have not wrapped it here. Yeah. 100 hertz. 
so 100 hertz and this one is 120 so f1 is 100 and f2 is 120 so the maximum frequency is 120 so the sampling frequency or the nyquist rate should be double of this that is 240 hertz and ts you can just get by 1 by 2 seconds let's once again go through the process of this one see the sync 200 pi t is a rectangular function uh, sync 200 pi t is the fourier transform of the if you do it in the fourier domain it will become the rectangular function and if you do the fourier transform of the sync square it is going to become a triangular pulse what we what we have to understand is that the uh, the spectra of these two so the width is around 2 tau by 2 2 minus tau by 2 2 tau by 2 for both of them this is just as a memorizing purpose I am telling you. You have to understand how we are getting this by doing actual the Fourier transform by using the formula of this xt e to the power minus g omega t. You will get these values. And then you are getting this t sync ohm tau by 2. So uh, what we need to do is we need to compare this portion. This is in the Fourier domain. But if you do it in the uh, time domain, it is again tau t by 2. So this one I compared with this one. And then I took out tau by 2, that was 200 pi. So the frequency is going to be 100. In this case, what happened that the this is tau by 4. So you took out tau by 2 because the width of the triangular pulse was tau by 2 only. Over here you can see the width was tau by uh, tau, that is from minus tau by 2 to tau by 2. So instead of tau by 4, we took out tau by 2 and then we took out the frequency. And then we used the maximum frequency. This is all for today. I hope you like the session. Uh, let's meet in the next session. Thank you, everyone.